Ladies and gentlemen, this Rick Gamer to the Comp video. Let's talk about NVIDIA's Volta architecture and a potential release date for the graphics cards. So, to get everyone onto the same page, Pascal is of course the current architecture, but it will be succeeded with Volta. Now, early on in NVIDIA's roadmaps, it was originally intended to be Kepler, Maxwell, and then Volta, and Pascal was never mentioned. But NVIDIA has since changed that because they didn't feel that Volta would be released on schedule, and that's why that Pascal was inserted between Maxwell and Volta. But, currently NVIDIA are utilizing 16nm FinFET process for Pascal, while AMD are utilizing 14nm for the Polaris and the Vega cards. But, this is said to continue with um, the arrival of Volta rather than NVIDIA switching to 10nm. Now the reason behind this is they don't feel that the process is going to be mature enough, at least according to these rumours which are originating with Fudzilla, for Volta to arrive on any schedule with any decent yields. So once again they could manufacture the cards but let's say 50% of them, and I'm just pulling a number out the air, is faulty that doesn't help anyone and it means that the cards are a going to be really expensive and b like diamond dust to actually purchase for the customer so nvidia want to change that and they're most likely going to be sticking to 16 nm where now they've got a lot more experience so they could probably do a lot more with the architecture speaking of which what can we expect performance wise from volta well the obvious answer and perhaps a bit of a cop-out one is more performance Yes, that's true. Now, one thing we do know, and details overall are very sketchy with Volta, to say the least. I mean, sketchy is an understatement, but it's touted to offer stacked DRAM. So we can assume it's going to be the equivalent of HBM2 or something else. Now, what we don't know is, of course, how many of the GPUs will actually have stacked DRAM. I imagine there's going to be a cutoff point. For example, it could be the 1160 or whatever the equivalent is going to be uh, called, which would have, let's say, GDDR5X or perhaps just regular plain old GDDR5, while the higher-end cards are going to have um, the stack DRAM, which would obviously provide enough bandwidth. It's possible, therefore, that we could see Volta released in the second half of next year, which would be pretty interesting, to say the least. And it would make sense for NVIDIA, because they have been pushing the Titan, the GP102, and other such cards out with reckless abandon recent, recently. Now, one area that the graphics cards have suffered in, and of course I am referring to Pascal here, is some of DirectX 12's functionality, as well as Vulkan by the name of Asynchronous Compute. Now, Asynchronous Compute was not something that NVIDIA could really change with the architecture. And this is something I touched on a couple of times in my own videos. I didn't really feel that they were going to be able to change it, because it's inherently part of the architecture. So unless they were going to do a radical redesign of um, Pascal, and let's face it, at that point, there was no way they could do it. They were way too far into development. They were basically screwed. They had to just sail the ship and let clock speed and just general IPC and general performance improvements get them down the river. This is not something that they perhaps will have to deal with with Volta. They could potentially redesign a lot of the back end and put in the equivalent of ACES, Asynchronous Compute Engines, which would help to um, schedule compute work between the um, graphics workload and the regular compute workload, so in short that the processors can do both things much more efficiently, which is very much like AMD's tech current technology. Now, it's quite interesting because originally GP102 was expected to be released at Gamescon but now, of course, NVIDIA have since gone ahead and started to announce the details. We know we know that when uh, the Titan is going to be released, we know the specifications. But there are some issues with the card. Um, essentially, the Titan X only has 3,584 cores, despite the fact that the die is, well, a behemoth. It's absolutely gargantuan. Now, one of the reasons behind that is the bigger Pascal chips are starting to be redesigned for double precision, which was a massive issue, an absolutely gargantuan issue, 
with uh, Maxwell. It meant the the cards just wasn't do good for certain tasks, which were not necessarily gaming related. It's going to be an interesting quandary, therefore, for a lot of gamers, because if you don't have the cash for a graphics card in, let's say, until let's say five to six months, potentially you could plonk down a lot of money, and then six months later, Volta could be out. Now, obviously, at the end of the day, six months is still six months, and six months is still quite a long time. And essentially, a rumor is not necessarily equating a real release date. Now, there are also a lot of questions. For example, is it going to be a, a refinement of the architecture? So it's going to be, well, I guess, the old Intel way of doing things. I, I guess you could best describe it as the TikTok scheme. Or is it going to be an entire new architecture with major improvements? To put it into another way, is it going to be the equivalent of the GCN architecture where we've seen iterations of it? Or another way of putting it would be, let's say, aimed uh, NVIDIA's older technology. For example, Pascal and Maxwell do share a lot of similarities, but NVIDIA simply went in, cranked up the clock speeds quite a bit, made the um, CUDA cores much more efficient and redesigned some of the block, uh, sorry, the back end just to be able to get as much performance as possible out of the graphics card, which has obviously worked out rather nicely, to say the least, and I, I'm at all for it. So, it's going to be an interesting scenario for a lot of gamers. Now, currently, the Titan X is being marketed to put out enough performance for 4K 60fps, which... I guess, technically it probably would be able to do on most titles. There are certainly going to be some which it probably won't, but let's face it, the problem is I've got with the with the Titan X, it's not that much faster than the 1080 and it's asking twice the price. Now I'm not telling you that you should not spend your money on it because ultimately your bank account, buy whatever the hell you want with your money, but my argument is that if I personally were going to plonk down 1200 bucks on a graphics card, I would definitely buy two 10 aces because you get a lot more performance for your money. Then again, if money isn't the issue, you could go ahead and buy two, ten, uh, two Titans, I suppose. Or, and once again, it does have specific usages. For example, double precision and other such workloads. But for the average person, for gaming, not so much. Anyway... Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Uh, I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.